Cool. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Nidafan, and uh, we got my co-host, Austin Mitchell, and we have a very special guest. But before we get into that, Austin, what's going on, dude? What's up, bro? Back with another one. Let's go. Um, dude, just hit my workout. Didn't feel like working out, that's for sure. But um, as you guys know, brick by brick. So you gotta every single day, right? And we talked about this in one of our previous episodes, right? There's there's power in choosing to do something and never stopping. And so I think that's one thing that that has really helped me really grow and, and see success, right? Last episode, we really talked about the power of habits. So if you guys haven't already checked that out, definitely go check that out right now. But um, there's there's definitely power in habits and doing things, showing up consistently day in and day out, um, which is awesome. How's your morning been, dude? Good, bro. It's it's getting getting comfortable being uncomfortable and just practicing that rule every single day, and just never giving up on it, man. Anytime I don't want to do something, I always I always repeat that in my head. So that's it, bro. That's it. Well, let's uh let, let's bring on Alex, man. So, dude. Uh, one, thanks for coming on here, man. And, uh, you, what's cool is, is you are, you're young, hungry. Um, you've been on a ton of different, you're, you're all over the place, bro. I can't escape you. Yeah. Um, and so, um, dude, talk a little bit about, um, you and, and just like seeing early success in the industry, right? Cause 92% of insurance agents fail. A lot of people are, are failing out consistently. Um, Talk a little bit about like seeing early success and, and how you've been able to get to the spot you're at now. Yeah, man. First off, I am grateful to be on the show. Um, I'm very pumped up to be here, bro. I know we, we've done a podcast before yeah. and now we're doing one together with you in Austin. So I'm pretty pumped up to be here, man. But I mean, just to begin with, I mean, I, you know, I give all my, um, you know, praise to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I mean, if, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here today and all the success I've had. Um, so I always give that number one. And one of the most big things that I did for my success at my age was number one was being grateful. I think a lot of, I think a lot of, you know, um, young entrepreneurs or just entrepreneurs in the space of the insurance space, you know, struggle with being grateful. And then obviously if you're not grateful, you're pretty negative, right? So if you're grateful, yeah. you're always going to be positive too, right? So what I've um, definitely this year have honed in on myself was, Every single morning when I wake up, I'll write down everything that I'm grateful for in the morning, right? Because that's already giving me a good jump start to my day. I'm fired up, ready to go. And then right after I'm done writing down everything I'm grateful for, I'm going to put my goals. So what's my goals? My goal is today to make two grand, right? I'm going to try to get easy issue paid two grand, right? Um, write $100,000 in annuity business. Those are my two goals for the day, right? So I've already wrote down all I'm grateful for. I've already prayed. And it starts, everything that I'm saying right now, it all starts in the morning, right? Right as you wake up, right? Mm -hmm. I think... When it comes down to, it, I think, you know, as an own individual person, they can only have their own time and their own like uh, meditation in the morning. Because if you're if you're very successful and you're a hard worker, you're so busy throughout the day yeah. that you don't have any more much time to yourself besides waking up in the morning and having time to yourself. Right. That's one thing that really, you know, was a big thing for my success was more of a structure standpoint than like kind of just running around, you know what I mean? Because I think when people first start to, as they're running around, they don't have any sense of what's going on. They're just kind of saying what their mentor has for them, but it's even more in the life situation, because if you have structure in your life, you're going to have structure in your business. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think those are a couple of key points that really helped me um, stay to it was being more organized and structured for sure. 100%. Yep. That's something we touch on all the time, right? It's like, Having structure in your life and it bleeds back into your business, man. That's massive. Yes, sir. Dude, yeah, you don't have you don't have uh, business problems. You have personal problems that'll show up in your business, right? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. If, if exactly. you get your personal life set, set up, um, it was funny because I was listening to this guy. Um, I forgot. I think it's Ravi Avadalo or something like that. But he was mm -hmm. talking about like optimizing for um what was it? It was, it was not like business success, but it was just like life and fulfillment or something like that. And it was, it was an interesting concept, but you definitely want to structure your life the same way as, as business and stuff. So good, bro. I mean, I, I think back to like, um, even when I look at some of my friends, because I just graduated high school, right. Two years ago now they're mm -hmm. in college doing their own thing. That's great. Right. But I think even some of my friends even just went to college just for the hype of it. You know what I mean? And for me, it was just more of a, you know, I, first off, I didn't even really like school to begin with. 
Yep. Now it's like, I, if I can just start off, take this off and start running with it. I mean, and I saw my dad, what he did in his first six months in 2009 in the business, you know what I mean? It's like, what's the point of me even really going to college, you know? Yeah. 100%. Um, dude. So, uh, you, so, so both of us had opportunities, right? Two, two seasons of ultimate agent. I had a completely different experience than you, obviously. Congrats on winning, dude. Um, that's yeah, huge. Yeah, it, was, it was fun watching. Um, what did you take away from that? Right. Because yeah. there's so many different things that I feel like you, you take, you're, you're in a pressure cooking environment. You're wanting to win and succeed. All of a sudden the cameras are in your face. Like, what are some things that you actually took away that you, you still implement to your business like a year, a year ago uh, yeah. to the date? Um, you know, kind of what, like Austin said in the beginning, he's gotten uh, comfortable with being uncomfortable. Right. And I think that's something that really happened to me. Um, in the show because pre pre ultimate agent I mean just so grateful for the whole experience but pre ultimate agent um, I, my business was not where it was supposed to be I wasn't hitting the numbers I was really really lazy I was good for maybe you know four or five hundred dollars deposited a week which is brutal I mean this is last year in January right in 2023 right um, and then it came full cir circle Cody asked me to be on the show and actually at first a lot of people don't know this but I was I was telling Cody, how I'm going to get with my parents and I'll get back with you. It's not something that I jumped on, you know what I mean? Because I was nervous because I was scared too, because I wasn't where I was supposed to be. I didn't even, I only had like five or six contracts. My dad sent me a billion, but I only did five or six because I'm just lazy. Right. Yeah. And then I, I break it down to now I'm having the conversation with my parents. Now, are you going to be on the ultimate agent? All my friends, actually, that was the break. That was their spring break. They were all going to Florida and I was saying, Hey, I'm scared. I'm really, really scared, but, um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and get a plane ticket and go to Florida with them. And that's, that's exactly what was getting ready yeah, to happen. That's crazy. And it, it just shows how everything was going wrong and how ungrateful I was because I wasn't going to jump on that ultimate agent, you know, um, opportunity right then and there. Right. So then after many talks with me my dad and my mother, um, it ended up breaking down that I really didn't have an option. So I had to go on the show now. So now, yeah. now I, my, and I'm grateful for it because I wouldn't be where I'm at today if I wasn't on the show. Right. Um, but then I hopped on the show the first days I was really, really nervous, but after the first couple of days, I was like, it really, I think for all the contestants, it was showing them like, you can really, really do this at a high level. You know what I mean? Even when the cameras are in front of you. So you should be yeah. able to do it even easier when there's not a camera in front of you. Right. It all comes back to the accountability thing, right? The cameras and Cody and just the whole environment's holding you accountable. You're either going to do good or you're going to embarrass yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So that's something that I honed in on is I'm going to make sure I try my best no matter what it is, no matter how many contracts I have, no matter what's going on in my situation with, with business and life, I'm still going to forget about everything. I'm going to focus on this this week, right? And that's exactly what I did. And after the first couple of days, like I said, I, I, I proved to myself, I was like, damn, I can really, really do this. And I was like, okay, great. So then after the Wednesday and Thursday came and now I'm already locked in, ready to go. And every day just continue to compound, compound, compound. I knew on the last day, even versus Colin and Adam, I, I didn't have one cent, one cent of like limiting belief or disbelief that I wasn't going to win the show just because how much work I put in before, right. It's all about the steps that you're putting in before to now on the show and then full cir full circle after ultimate agent 360 um, it showed me what working actually looks like, right? Because everybody has that Johnny and Austin, we all know everybody has that breaking point of, you know, the breaking point to when they got successful. Right. Yep. And the breaking point to me getting successful is first off being grateful, no matter what, what the situation was, me being grateful was number one, but number two was the experience on the ultimate agent show for someone else who could be getting in the right room with somebody, right. Always getting in the right room with people that are better than you, that not necessarily better than you, but that can teach you something that are really successful in the industry. Right. It's all these different types of breaking points and everybody has their own breaking point, but that's where it becomes, you know, becoming successful is having that breaking point. Mm -hmm. That's huge. You know, you, yeah. you like, you know, I, I appreciate you sharing that, like having that self doubt yeah. before getting on the show and like, you know, overcoming that fear and, you know, that was a breaking point for you, but dude, it bleeds into exactly what we talk about with every new agent that we speak with. It's like, you know, they're struggling to like, write more than a couple hundred dollars for the premium a week or, you know, a thousand premium a week. And it's just like diving in face first, like an yeah. ultimate agent kind of forced you into doing that. Like you had to dive in face first, and yeah. like full immersion and just yeah. like get buried in the business. And 
that's what a lot of other people needed to do. I mean, what would you say was like the biggest thing to help you overcome that fear? Like, you know, diving into the show and being down there your first few days. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things that helped me with, that's a great question. One of the biggest things that really helped me dive in was like I was saying on the accountability side, but more on my dad, because my dad's, I'm super grateful. He's been in the industry for 15 years now. We're sit running on 16 now. And every single day, multiple day, multiple times a day, I'd be talking to him throughout the whole ultimate agent show. Right. So now I know I have a guy in my corner, right. It's always about having a mentor, but I always had a guy in my corner that I know I could call if I'm struggling if I even need help in a house, because I was doing a lot of in-home appointments during the ultimate agent, this guy's been in home his whole career. So I know I have a guy that I can lean on even to get on the phone with the client. If I didn't know what I was doing, right. I knew majority of what I was doing, but there's some things I actually need help on throughout the week. And this guy is sitting here helping me out, no matter what the situation is, even after appointment, I would always call him, check in. How's it going? Well, do this. Good job. Push forward. Let's get to the next house. Right. That's just one small win. We got to keep moving. Right. So to answer your question, really, it's just the accountability thing and having, the right person in your corner, just like having a good support system, your circle, everything, all the, all these things line up. Right. And he was the one right there for me that helped me. I could say win the ultimate agent as well, just because all the stuff he trained me through in the past before the ultimate agent. I mean, I still had all these training points. I was just lazy as a days long. Right. Yeah. So now I had all this work ethic in me and that's, that that's probably one of the main guys that really you know, help me take that step too. No, that's awesome, dude. And and uh, I know that that was mainly face to face. And and you last time we talked, you're doing a hybrid of like telesales face to face. Um, what are you doing like right now? Like you're doing face to face in person. I know you're doing like uh retirement seminars. Like talk through that a little bit. Yes, sir. Okay, very very good question. So first, um, first what I've been doing recently, like you said, I've been doing these retirement seminars. We labeled us tax for retirement seminars. So we'll go over all of the retirement, Medicare, life, ancillary products, um, their investment accounts mainly as well. And then doing a will or trust. So right? what, one, what, a couple quick questions to follow up just on that specifically, right? So you're doing these seminars, which is dope. Uh, and you're doing it with somebody else, right? Is it you and somebody else? Yeah. So me, I, I've been doing it with a few different people. So the vendor that we use is actually called white glove. So th that's the vendor that actually gets that puts on the seminar. And then I'm doing, I'm doing it with my dad and then another agent named Jeff. So okay. we, we have quite a few agents, but those are the two main guys that I'm doing it with. Yeah. Cool. So you're doing that. And then how are you getting people to actually show up to these, these, uh, seminars or they like direct mail or they like this agency pretty much is getting people to show up and, and how many people are actually showing up and then talk through that whole sales process as well. Yep. Yep. Um, so starting off white glove, actually what we've learned is they'll run ads on Facebook. So they'll advertise it on Facebook. Then off the, the ad on Facebook, they'll put a register link. They'll click on the register link, register. They'll have the community center or whatever library, wherever we're doing the seminar at. They'll register there. The seminar is going to be next Monday at 11 o'clock. Be there, right? So they'll register. Then we'll get an update from White Glove on our CRM that we use through them saying that th these people are going to be here. Obviously be ready to answer another question you had. We probably have, I mean, we'll probably have 20 people register. 12 to 15 people show up. We'll end up booking. If there's 12 people that show up, we'll end up booking about seven or eight people. So majority of the room, which is great. Right. Do you and put on cool the seminar? The, what's that? Do you put on the seminar or somebody else does? Me and my dad both do. Okay, cool. Yep. So, um, and then if I'm with Jeff, me and Jeff both do. So we'll take turns. But um, what we'll do is when we have those seven to eight people, each, each person that we're sitting down with has at least, I mean, I haven't seen anything less, at least $80,000, like in a 401k or IRA, right? Um, the highest client I've seen, he had like 2.3 or something. We didn't end up rolling all of that, but he had 2.3 um, in his 401k and then a couple of different accounts as well. So, I mean, these people are really high net worth clients that need help. They're there because they need help, right? So we're there to assist them and tell them that, you know, we're here to help you in any way we can. We would love to set up a session once we're done explain all these things with you, you know? Um, so then we'll end up booking those appointments, obviously go see them. And then I have our whole fact finder right here. I'll kind of show you guys. Obviously we have the client's name, address, birth date. Then we'll go over their medical. So that's more of their Medicare. And then we'll go over all their ancillary, right? That is dental and vision, cancer coverage, long-term care, home health care, and hospital indemnity. Jump to the back, final expense, life insurance. What do you have? And then we'll go through the retirement income. And then that's, that's pretty much about it. Dude, I, we'll I, so, uh, that is insane, bro. So, um, 
how many so you you got to be closing multiple apps per appointment that you're doing right yep yeah because so what's it really, your close rate's got to be over a hundred percent guaranteed i feel like right like in in, not in I, well, yeah so i wouldn't say every single person that we're sitting down with i wouldn't say we're closing if we get seven or eight appointments i would tell you we would probably close about five or six so, on average like, but you're different products but, are you writing a client yeah yeah so what's re what's really cool about it? I mean, this whole fact finder is going over everything on the retirement. So we'll really, if we get in a home, we're gonna at least write two, two out of all of these, either two two Medicare apps, two ancillary apps, or two life insurance apps. It just depends what what their need is, right, and what we can possibly save them money on, or get them more coverage in life insurance, whatever it is. But that's separate from the annuity because I think if we get in a home and they have a four hundred one k or IRA. I think there's probably a 75, 80% chance we'll help roll it over into annuity. So really, uh, that's yeah. insane, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. So in, in terms of, is that a lot of, a lot of your focus now is, is really going in with that, trying to get that and capture the, the IRA 401k and then cross sell or. Yep. Yeah. So we'll go in with the intent to, to try to na nail it on the head with the, with their 401k or IRA or stocks or CDs, bonds, whatever they got four or three B, whatever it is. So we'll nail that. And then we'll go over back through. We tell them that we're going to go back through it because that's not their main intent for us to come talk to them about Medicare. But we let them know, hey, we go over all things retirement. So when we sit down with you today, we're going to go over your Medicare as well. Right. Um, so we'll do that. And then everything else when, when it comes to the insurance side of it. So so I'm curious. Right. And Austin, I, I probably you probably have a few questions, too. But this is, this is interesting because a lot of people want to work direct response leads. Like that's what we teach. That's what we do all day, every day yep. is just direct response. This is definitely a different approach, right? Going after the educational seminar, um, things like that. But in your, like in your experience doing both, which one, one, do you like more? And then two, do you, do you see more success with long-term? Do you think? I believe so. Yes. Or what are the pros and cons with it? Do you think? Are you, you're saying like the pros and cons between the educational seminar, like doing an educational seminar and like uh, going out and working like direct you, like you've worked leads, right? right like yes, just yes, final yes. expense type leads. Like yes. there's a huge difference in what mm -hmm. you're doing in the whole sales and, process. So, right. Yeah. And I, to, yeah, to answer that question now, I mean, it's it, honestly, I feel like it's pretty night and day for someone else. It may not be night and day. I think it's, it costs you a, a, a pretty penny to do this seminar because we're doing it through, through the white glove vendor, the person that's actually getting these clients in the seats. But I think it's night and day. The white glove seminars are way better than working, like knocking doors, direct mail leads. Um, just because now we're not just going to get one app. We're going to get multiple apps in the home Medicare. That's obviously on the back end for renewals. And then we'll sell life insurance as well. That's on the front end. We're going to get a nine month advance on that, which is going to be amazing. And then we're going to sell another annuity too. Right. So, yeah. Um, and the referrals on this has been crazy as well, because most of their friends have the same thing as them. They'll have these IRAs and 401ks and we've got multiple referrals or we've, we've rolled some of their friends stuffs over too, yeah. just because we took so much good care of the client. Right. It's really about taking the client. It's all a, it's all a relationship business and making sure we take care of the client first. Then they're like, okay, this guy really did take care of me. I should refer Betty, my friend Betty to you guys. We'll call it Betty, set up a time with her, or they'll even call us. We've had their friends call us to set up a time to meet with us because they don't know what they're doing either. Right. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I love seeing like the different sides of the business because it is complete opposites. And like, there's a million different ways to slice a pie in the insurance industry. Like, yep. you know, we're used to sitting at home in like a hoodie and gym shorts and like just ripping deals over the phone all day. You know, and, and you're out, you're out here, dude, like, on the more professional side, like doing seminars and sitting down in homes, man. And it's really like refreshing to see somebody that's younger, you know, in our age group, that's, yeah. you know, doing those kind of things, because from my point of view, it seems like it's like a dying breed. Right. I mean, yeah. my uncle in the industry for 40 plus years, he did the same thing you're doing. Um, and he's always preaching it to me, but it seems like the barrier of entry is just like so high. Like it seems like such a daunting task. Um, and you know, we're just stuck in our own avenues, man, but it's, it's awesome listening to you and what you're doing, man. It's, that's really refreshing. Yeah. I love it. What are you, so are you guys paying for the seminar or are you guys paying per show? What's really cool about that is we're paying per show. So nice. what, that, that's okay. a great question. So now if we get Johnny, if we get 25 people that register and 10 show up, we get 15 free leads. 
15 free people oh, that I we see. can call. And those people sometimes, not all the time, um, sometimes they're even better than the people that showed up to the seminar because they're wondering like what even happened in the seminar. They registered for a reason. They're curious, right? So now we'll go out to the home, explain everything and what we do. We're already in the home now. Now we have a really good chance to close too, right? So yeah, that's what's that's really cool because we, we don't got to pay for them. So I know that you said it's it's definitely more of an upfront cost, but like, do you know your like cost per acquisition with that? And then also like, because you're close. The, the, th the interesting thing is because you're, you're paying obviously more, but if you roll over one 401k, you're at least breaking even, I'm assuming. And then you're probably closing multiple of those. So you're, I, I, I don't know. Like it's, it's definitely really, really, really interesting for sure. Yep. Yeah, that's gonna um, be so we'll have, we'll have each household that shows up. It's $300. So we're going to pay $300 per household. So that's a husband and wife that shows up. Um, each seminar is going to cost us anywhere between eight to nine grand for, for the two seminars. Cause we'll do two seminars on one day. It'll cost us about eight to nine grand. And we roll over one 401k, just like you said, and you'll make your money back. So, I um, mean, then everything else is just obviously a plus. Yeah, that's, that, that's not, it's definitely not cheap. It's definitely a, a lot up front, but like, I definitely see that, that, that you're getting that pretty quick. So you're paying, are you paying on the day of the seminar or you pay earlier? I pay, I pay the day after. So what we'll do, the, the reason why I pay the day after is we'll have everybody that registers, then we'll have the sign-in sheet, whoever everybody signs in, and then we'll fill it all into white glove and then they'll send us the bill of, you know, the $300 for each household that shows up. So um, that's that's how it breaks down. And yeah. You said it was like eight to nine K per seminar and you do two in a day? Yes. So no, okay. it's eight to nine K for the two seminars. It's not, okay. it's not just, yeah, it, it's not uh, <laughs> eight to nine for both. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So, like, I mean, you know, obviously it can di differ between people, and like, I don't know if you're comfortable even sharing this, but like, what does that look like on like an ROI? Like, yep. Um. So, and, and it's a circle thing, you know, because at every single seminar you're getting you're getting that each time, right? So it's just a circle, right? The week after that, it, it keeps us busy for a week and a half. So two weeks after that, we're already invested in the next seminar, right? So I mean. I'm usually going in half which each, with each seminar. So it costs me about four grand, four, four grand to 4,500. Um, and then each seminar, I mean, we're probably, I'm probably good. Um, and this is my half to make about 10 to 15 um, uh, each seminar. Um, my best one has been, what was it? 21 or 22. And that was uh, two months ago. So that's my best one. But I think you're good in between 10 to 15 um, for, for each seminar for sure. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, double and double money, and you're doing those yeah. like about every what every week, week and a half, week and a half, week and a half to two weeks, really, because I mean, we'll be booked up for appointments. Um, because these, I mean, the thing with these appointments is it's gonna, it's gonna be about a three hour appointment because I mean, when you start talking about their money, I yeah, mean, it, it's a really serious topic, right? So, um, and then going over the Medicare and ancillary and life, I mean, you're going over everything, so it, it definitely does take a minute. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. What are what are some uh common objections that you're getting with those types of uh clients? One thing that I've seen often, and well, like I said, I'm a big, you know, obviously a big proponent and believer in being honest because I think a lot of agents try to put on a front or you know, try to be, you know, try to put on a character for someone else, which I don't like at all because the client will be able to tell that. But then they'll they'll ask, I wouldn't know, I wouldn't say if this is necessarily an objection, but they'll say when we start talking about their money and stuff and we're about to write the, the app up for their, for their annuity that we're going to roll over, they'll ask like, how do you get paid? Like, are you, are, are you earning interest on my money? Like what, what's going on? Cause they get curious how we get paid. Right. And how, how it actually ends up working out is we'll tell them, Hey, when I do this for you and the policy gets bound together into issues, I get paid a one time, I get a paid one time fee from the, from the annuity company. So for example, if it's a theme, right, that's a pretty big company. Uh, what we're doing here is with a the theme. Once I get this bound together, Miss Betty, I only get paid a one-time fee, right? The guy that's working on your 401k and IRA right now is actually earning interest on your money if you didn't know um, because they're, they're managing and moving your money to different stocks and stuff. But I only get paid a one-time fee from the annuity company and then that's it. I don't earn any interest on your money. Yes, I still will be your lifetime agent. I always follow up every year with you guys and you guys will have me for life. But that's what's going to end up happening. That's one thing I've gotten hit with before. And then obviously the other objections as well, like maybe life insurance objections, like I don't really need it because I got so much money in my 401k or IRA, right? I've heard that before. 
But even by that time, I mean, we'll already be helping them with their 401k or IRA and rolling that over. So it's not like a, it's not like a huge deal because I'm not, I'm not going to nail it that they need to get life insurance. Like if you got a bunch of money in your 401k or IRA, let's try to just go ahead and help you out with that. You know, yeah. those are the two big things though, really, when it comes. Yeah. That's dope. That's really interesting, um, which is cool. So you're, you're doing that, obviously. Um, when would you, for you, uh, in your experience and, and opinion, would you say is the right time to make that transition to that space rather than like starting in a final expense type mm -hmm. spot? Because I think like it's really important to go do final expense. It gives you the knickknacks of the business, allows you to really build a good foundation. But then I do see the value in being able to do those types of, of presentations. So when's kind of the right time to pivot? I, I know that you're like building and, and helping agents now. So what's your advice to them? Cause I I'm assuming they probably want to get into this action too. Yeah. Um, definitely starting agents. You can definitely agree with me on this as well. You guys both would is like, don't do too many things when you first start off, right? You need to stick to one thing and hone in on that. Like for example, final expense, I think is a great thing to start off with. Final expense is amazing. I still do final expense. Honing in on final expense is really, really good because once you master that, like really, really master it, then you can start jumping to different avenues like Medicare, for example. So now you can do Medicare and life, but you have to master one thing at a time because you can't juggle so many things around because you're never going to be able to build, build your business in final expense or Medicare because you really don't know what you're doing, right? So I would definitely say before you jump into doing everything retirement, since you're a new fresh agent, start doing one thing at a time. And then as you master each one, you can jump to another thing, master that, master that, master that. And then now you're mastering everything, right? So that's one really, really big proponent that I would say that you need to do one thing at a time for sure. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like, dude, I love that, that, you know, terminology, like when you're going into homes, like, dude, you're just this, you're a Swiss army knife. You're going yeah. like, <laughs> oh, like, As Pete Fournier says. <laughs> yeah. I love that, dude. I love that. dude. Yeah. A lot of respect there dude it's awesome man yeah what's uh what's kind of like your goals like long term man like are you planning on staying in the field forever how does that look like are you wanting to build out some agents i'm not i know what my i know what i want to hit goal wise i'm not sure what my future holds whether i am you know obviously my my goal is to you know at some point be it be an agency owner right um or have some type of equity in the agency that i'm in now obviously when i'm continuing to keep working hard and pushing forward but this year, long term goal wise, this year my my goal was to make about three hundred grand, which I th I am on pace to do it, which I'm really really excited um, from all the work. Because last year, I mean last year was a great year too, but I think this that each year is going to continue to get better. I mean even for you guys, each year will continue to get better, right? Yeah. And I think that's one thing as well. People e even when it comes down to goal setting, people want to keep to the same thing every single year, right? And you got you got to set lofty goals because even if you don't hate your goal, you still fell forward, right? Um, so I'm a big proponent in that um, is just continue to stay the course. And um, when I say 300 grand, I think people as well don't, they just say the number, but they don't set up the daily things. Like, like I was telling you guys in the beginning, I'll write down when I'm grateful, then I'll write down my daily goals, right? Yeah. Because you can't just say, hey, I'm going to make 300 grand this year and then not break it down day to day and week to week, right? And month to month. So that's what I'm, I'm very big on being structured, like more structural, like I said in the beginning, because in the beginning I was not, I think one of the biggest things why agents fail too is you're not organized, right? You'll say you'll make this, but you're not doing everything day to day to make that happen, right? So it's all about being organized and staying structural and be, holding yourself accountable, you know? That's good. Um, to be able to hit long, to, like a lot of the agents might be like, you guys listening right now might be like 300,000, that's a lot. But then when you actually break it down, I, I really believe like, break down the, the inputs to be able to make it unreasonable to hit that. Right. And so for you, you obviously got the seminars going on, you got the team building, you got the age, whatever it is. Um, but like build in the inputs daily, what are your daily tasks and, and non-negotiable things that you need to do to be able to get there? Right. It, whether that's making $150 a day, whether that's, um, being able to get to those seminars, being able to book X amount of appointments to be able to get to your goals weekly, monthly, and then also yearly, um, and staying consistent with that 100% will help you get there. Yep. And I think also, I mean, I, I'm a big proponent and whatever, wherever there is a will, there's a way, right? Because I think yeah. everyone wants to will themselves to do something, but when they will the, their self to do something, they could see like that top of the mountain or that top goal is kind of impossible, yeah. but it's not, you know what I mean? Like I, I, 
I'll tell you guys something. When I first started in the business, um, I was going out and this was when we were with a separate IMO. I was going out with this agent and he was training me. I was sitting in the car telling myself that I don't think I'd ever be able to lead an appointment by myself. Like this is when I was 18, right? This was two years ago now. I was sitting in the car saying, I don't think I'll ever be able to lead. Like I'm so nervous to the point where I don't think I'll actually be able to lead an appointment by myself, which scared me, right? But I think it all comes back to their own limiting beliefs, right? So when I say there's a will, there's a way. There really is because it's all about what you're telling yourself every day. Just like what you said, Johnny, your input, right? Because whatever you're inputting is always going to be your output, yeah. right? So, you know, you're the sum of the five people you surround yourself with, right? That's going to be your input and that's going to be your output, right? Yeah. What I've started been doing as well is I know that you saw Justin Waller at the airport. That Was it yeah. was it the airport that you saw him? <laughs> yeah. Bro, I love that guy, dude. I mean, him. Yeah, he's dope. You, do you know who Luke Belmar is? Have you seen some yeah, of his stuff? Yeah, of course, bro. Dude, yeah. Like these guys are amazing. Like they are, they give you so much great content. I sit there and just soak myself in that. You know what I yeah. mean? People say scrolling's bad. Scrolling is bad. But the times that you're not working, scrolling is good if you're watching the right things, right? Because, yeah. I mean, I'm inputting, inputting all this good information in my head, man. And, like, all their business tactics and everything that they say in life and business is so freaking good. And I just – I can't help but love those guys and hopefully one day be on a podcast with those guys and ask them billions of questions because I have a billions of questions for those guys just because how good they are in business. They do everything the right way, you know what I mean? And it's all about doing something the right way and wherever there's a will, there's a way and continue to stay the for force and stay consistent. Just like what you said, Johnny. I mean, yeah. 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 It was, uh, Justin Waller's definitely a, uh, he's, he's like way more jacked in person. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's funny because all of a sudden, like I'll, I'll share this story. I've never actually shared this story. So what happened was I'm walking, I'm headed to, um, I'm in North Carolina headed to, or I just landed in Georgia, Atlanta. So I landed in Atlanta get off my uh get off my flight because i need to hit a connecting flight to go to new mexico and on my way there all of a sudden i'm like looking i'm literally on the podcast uh, on the plane i'm listening to his podcast with uh ryan pineda and so like it was fresh in my mind i saw him and all of a sudden i'm just walking and i look around and i see him and i was like what the heck i went straight up to him and i like pushed him i was like dude what the heck like <laughs> justin waller and he's like yeah, man. I'm like, I'm Johnny Nitta fan. Nice to meet you. So then uh, he's like, I was like, where are you headed? He's like, oh, I'm headed to Florida. And I was like, oh, that's what's up. And so then he was like looking, he's like, I don't know where to go. And I was like, I could help. I could help you get to your connecting flight. And so what happened was we ended up talking for 15 minutes. And so it's a long walk. And so what happens is like, dude, I've been following your stuff a lot. I really appreciate um, you buying a beer, right? For people. And so I think this is something, this is where when doors open up, go out and take them. There's been so many times I met with uh, this, the CEO, uh, the, the CSO of sales for acquisition.com had a dinner with him, asked him a ton of questions just in terms of building sales process. I talked with um, just multiple people. Um, Shaq was one of them, oh um, just different names. Like when you see them, a lot of people like are afraid to actually go up and talk with them. And I, I think like, I, I always like live with this motto of like, I would regret so much if I have one ounce of regret after the fact, after the, the moment's gone, I will, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to live with that. Right. And I think this is a good motto. So what happens is I see him go talk to him and I'm like, bro, I'm really trying to build my social media, like my personal brand. What are some things that you can really share with me? He's like, dude, whenever we started doing short form content to really blow up, it really helped with Andrew Tate. Um, like his model, we ripped that play. Uh, and I was like, dude, I feel like every single time you're on a podcast, it's like Andrew Tate's best friend speaks for the first time or whatever. And he's <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know if I like that necessarily, um, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I'm my own person, whatever. And so I was like, dude, I really appreciate you and what you're doing. Um, and uh, I like you are your genuine dude. He's like, how can you tell? And I was like, that's a great question. And so I was like, because you care for people, you care about people who actually built this, this country and you don't forget that. And you, it's your grassroots. And, um, and that's, what's really cool. And so we, we just start talking and he's like, so what do you do? I was like, I actually help life insurance agents really grow and scale their business. He's like, Oh, you're a life insurance agent. I was like, yeah. He's like, bro, I've been meaning to get in the game. Here's my phone. He gives me his phone. And he's like, follow, uh, follow me, follow yourself on Instagram, DM me. And you and I need to connect, right? And so I was like, all right, cool. So we connect back and forth via DM. Ghost, right? For like 
three months and he DMs me, bro. This is, and Austin knows this, right? And this is like super offset. Like Austin is my, uh, like he's, he, he's in my DMs. He sees everything. And so Austin sends me a screenshot and, uh, Justin Waller DMs me. He's like, what licensing course should I take for the life insurance exam? I'm trying to get licensed. And I was like, what the heck? This is like three months. We have no contact. All of a sudden he hits me up. I tell him, Hey, here's, here's what you got to do X, Y, and Z. And so we'll see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen and, and how that's going to flourish. I, I hope for him to be able to speak in a mastermind someday, but he's trying to get into the life insurance industry. And I'm like, Hey, if him and Tate and all of them actually got into the industry, this would go ballistic, but that's Bro. my story of like Justin Waller and like that. And it's funny because you, you made a comment. There's like a few other people along the way that have said something um, in there, but he's, he's, I think one thing with that is like, people are the same in person as they are like on social media, not everybody, but I think overall, like the same person you're going to get to, to watch a podcast with them is like the same person you're going to get in person. And I think if, if those aren't aligned and they're not the same person, I think that there's something that is to be said about that. Um, is, I don't know. There, there's like less trust. I feel like there. Um, so just be yourself in person, right? Be, be yourself on camera. And I think this goes into the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is just the power of social media, right? Because you, you have obviously really grown on social media, grown the following, really like grown that on uh, seeing that obviously ultimate agent was a huge help for that. Um, and in my business as well. So shout out to Cody, uh, for really putting us on, but, um, I don't think people understand the power of content. And so like, kind of share that with us, like, what have you seen the power of content and building a personal brand and the importance of that as you grow your business, um, like your social brand, yep. talk a little bit about that. Yep. So I don't, I'm a big believer as well. And you agree is like, you can't promote enough. I don't think you can ever promote enough. I think, um, uh, my content obviously hasn't been where it's supposed to be, but I, I usually like to blow up my story a lot. Um, because one big thing is when it comes with content, obviously you're putting yourself out there. People see like, this guy really has it right. Like for you, for you, you're, you're, you know, you're building all these eight, you're helping build all these agents businesses with these lead programs and everything, which I think is amazing. Right. Yeah. And you're the only way you got, the only way you got that Johnny is from promoting content. Right. Like yeah. I've, I've started my own coaching consulting business where I'm going to start coaching agents um, weekly. Right. Um, obviously I'm really busy, but I'll have two office days each week. So now I'll be able to do that and spend time with these agents, right? I'm only going to get those. I'm only going to get those people that want me to coach them if I promote content, right? Yep. So it's not just putting content out there just to put yourself out there. It's all a business transaction too. Like we, we want to actually help people. And in the midst of helping people, we make money by doing it as well, right? You putting yourself out there, just growing your following. And when you grow your following, it's only making you more money, right? I yeah. mean, it, it's all, I mean, there's always something bigger behind it, right? I mean, promoting your content every single day um, seeing like now when someone sees you in, in person, Johnny, by the time, let's say five years from now, you got like a hundred K on Instagram, bro. They're like, dude, that's Johnny Nittafan, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that, that, that's just like what, you, you know, you saw Justin Waller, bro. It's like Justin Waller, bro. No way. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I want to be like that one day. Ever, all of us want to be like that. Right. And it starts from ground zero, right. Is putting content out there every day and showing everybody that, you actually do have that it factor. And then once they see that you throwing yourself out there on podcasts, right? You've been on very, very many podcasts before. People seeing you working and doing the thing, right? By the time five years from now, like I said, you have 100K on Instagram, people are going to be coming up to you because you're going to be that next influencer. You'll be that next Justin Waller or Luke Belmore, but you're going to be Johnny Nitta fan, right? Yeah. Which I think is going to be pretty cool to see for everybody moving forward, you know? Yeah. And I think like the, the pat like long people buy in long form videos so if you guys aren't making long form like podcasts are a great way that's where i really like kind of found a little niche in specific in terms of like being able to interview because one it was helping me grow my business understand like what people are doing differently but also these are the things that really helped me grow my business really fast is like and this is a whole this could be a whole nother topic but like guys when you're watching podcasts go out and execute. Like I always have a rule for myself, go out. Like if I'm going to watch a podcast or actually invest time into like an, and spend an hour of my time, cause time is valuable. If I'm going to spend an hour of my time, I need to go out and actually execute. And I think a lot of people, what they do is they'll watch podcasts, they'll watch interviews, they'll watch like YouTube videos, 
and they won't execute. And it's a false like dopamine hit. So maybe you need to take a 7, 14, 21, maybe a month challenge of watching no YouTube, delete the app. And actually just because you are you know exactly what you need to do. If you are if you watch all these videos and you're not in a different situation, three, six, nine, 12 months from, from now, you're doing the wrong things. You're spending mm-hmm. time on the wrong things and not actually doing the work. You're not going to make money just by watching videos, right? They're great. They're awesome. Interviews are exciting. But at the same time, like if you're not actually going out and executing, those things will teach you more than any podcast, interview, whatever is th- is going to teach you. Real experience is going to help uh, really ch- uh, shape you and, and really build a skill. I don't know if you have anything to say on that, Austin. Yeah, I mean, you got to get your hands dirty, man. <laughs> yeah. You got to get your hands dirty. It's, it's easy to watch a lot of content and just have pointless hours spent and never execute on any of it. Um, you know, there's a perfect example of that last night, man. Like that Ed Milet video you sent me like, you know, over the weekend, dude. I listened to that really in depth last night and took a lot of notes, like stuff to implement in my life. And uh, so I try to do the same thing. I try to limit the content that I watch. I'm intentional with the content that I watch and who I'm listening to. Um, they're aligned with my values and my business and, you know, my personal growth in life. So yeah, anybody who's listening, like I advise doing the same, you know, don't listen to, you know, you know, you can listen to a hundred different people guys, but you know, really niche it down, pick like two, three, five that, that really align with you personally and in business and kind of hammer down on those. And like Johnny said, it's, don't binge watch. Don't binge watch. Yeah, like it's if you know, take take that information. Actually, take notes and and let that resonate in your life and your business, and take action yeah. on those ideas. Yep, I think another thing too. That's a good point. I think people always try to change somebody, and you can't change them. They have to change themselves, right? So you don't need to spend so much energy on trying to change somebody, but continue, like we say, content, putting more content out there. Maybe you can help change them. Maybe if it's a you know, a business partner, partner that you're working with or another agent that's in your downline that you're trying to work with, you cannot change them. They're going to have to do it themselves. Right. I mean, stagnant. I mean, if you're just being stagnant, you're not going anywhere. Right. So, yeah. I mean, you can try to help them so much, but it's at some point it's going to be wasted energy if you don't see a change, like within a month, you know, so yeah. you got to put your energy to people that are swimming towards you, not away from you. Right. Yeah. And, and I, I think like even in this topic, right. Like, um, you have, like you, in terms of like the content side, dude, it's cool because I know that you've posted on your story a few times, just people reaching out. You've actually hired people that have reached out to you. Um, how has agency building going and uh, like been going? And then also like, what have you been learning about yourself, but also like really what really um, helps people be successful as an agent? Yep. Um, agency building has been great. I think I've had tons and not just agency building, but also building, I mean, agency building, meaning by building my coaching and consulting business where I'm helping people, you know, in the industry as well, which has been going great as well. Um, And, you know, when it comes to learning something about myself, I've really learned that, like like I said earlier in the podcast, I mean, as I continue to keep putting myself in rooms with people that are, you know, that have achieved a lot more than me in the business for now, right? they've gave me so many different components on how I can build my business. So it's really showed me that I have so many more different levels to go in my business. And since I've seen that, it makes me want to like go get them. Right. Because I I always want to be the best at whatever I'm doing. I think that's something that people struggle with too. Like they're okay with being average, you know what I mean? Or being, you know, you know, okay with not being the best. Like I want to be the best at whatever I'm doing. So I'm going to try to nail it and go do it no matter what, what if the situation is like, uh, the world and what's going on with your life or whatever has happened. Nobody cares about your feelings. So whatever you're doing right now and you're feeling sorry for yourself, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're going nowhere. So that's your own fault. You have to yeah. go pick yourself up and go get to work. Right. And that's something that's happened with me um, through, you know, some things that, you know, I've had an aunt pass away, right. My mom's sister, which was really, really tough on me, but it wasn't, it, it doesn't give me the excuse to slow down. Right. If anything, it gives me the, the energy to keep going because something bad happened. Let's go ahead and use all that anger and sadness or whatever it is back into your business and work hard to make her proud. Right. You know, I think people, people use, people use these scenarios of when bad things happen to them for the excuse to just be depressed or let, let bad things start overcoming them. But those bad things are what's going to help you become successful. 
right? And people are always like, why me? Why me, God? Why me? Well, he's actually trying to help you because this is a small pitfall, pitfall that you're going to have to help build your business. And you'll be grateful that some of these th- some of these bad things did happen in the past because that's where it brought to you now, right? Yeah. So that's, that's another big proponent. Yeah, it's all mindset, man. It's all mindset. You can take any situation and find a positive in it. That's for sure. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, for, you know, I know you're working with like a few new agents, like you have you know, a little bit of a downline and you may be coached in a few different agents. Like, what do you think the biggest thing is to, you know, there's, you bring in some agents, man, obviously I'm sure you've seen it in the past that they come in, they're hungry, they're ready, but they're just not putting in like the input that they should be on a daily mm-hmm. basis. How do you help those agents like, you know, find success and like, you know, shift their mindset and be able to put in that input mm-hmm. that's necessary to see success? Yep. Um, kind of, kind of back to what I said earlier. And then another thing as well is obviously being grateful is number one thing. I think people, like I said, again, people just continue to be pe- people that aren't successful or not positive. There's probably something wrong with them not being grateful. Right. I had yeah. a buddy, I had a buddy, Austin, that I was talking to, um, this was a, probably about a week ago and he was, he's in college. He's actually a really good hearted guy, but he's told me that he's been down, sad, a little depressed, whatever it is. I'm saying, bro, like you have everything going for you in life right now. How could you possibly be depressed? Like, is your family healthy? Like, is is your whole family healthy? Is there anybody sick? Right. I mean, there, you look at other families, someone, someone, someone in their family just died today, bro. And you have your whole family right here in front of you. How can you not be grateful? Right. And he's like, man, dude, just this happened, this happened. And it's, it, these are all little things that, that he's, you know, making this such a big deal. I'm like, dude, what I started doing, and I, I coach you to do it, is every single morning when you wake up, you need to write down what you're grateful for, bro. Because when, if you're depressed or sad or negative, bro, it's probably because you're not grateful. And he's like, well, I am grateful. Well, you're not grateful because you're sitting here whining about all these things that are going wrong, but really you have everything going right for you. You're just looking at it the wrong way. Just like we said, you're looking at the right, the total wrong way, right? Yeah. So that's something that I would tell an agent. It's like, you just need to continue to be grateful and put always like what we said earlier, your input is always going to be your output, right? So reading the, reading the right books, I have a book sitting over here on the table that I, that I work on sometimes in my office, it's called high trust selling. I think reading is, is such a, such a great way to help build your business as well. Um, nine figure mindset by Patrick bet David. I mean, these books, I refer these to my agents all the time. So just making sure that you read, because when you read, it's going to help you get a better understanding of where these guys are coming from. And then you can help implement it too. Right. But I mean, one of the biggest things too, is like what I said, I mean, you can't change the way someone is. You can only coach them so much to the point where they may or may not be listening to you. Right. I mean, I'm sure they're listening to you, but it's about the execution, right? Johnny, like you're saying, you always got to execute. And um, it's to the point where there's always going to be a breaking point with the agent. If they're going to, you know, go forth with it or not, you know, and I think it's such, such, such a big thing to make sure that you stay accountable, make sure you're holding them accountable because obviously they don't want to embarrass themselves. It's like the ultimate agent. I didn't want to embarrass myself in the moment, but yeah. when you're seeing, when they see, and you like, you'll see a guy, let's say a guy puts up 3000 in AP for the week, for example, you, you, and then you have a coaching call with this guy that's not doing so good. Say, Hey man, I know you can be better than, I, I think there's a good way that you can be better than Johnny. Like, I think there's a way where there's a will, there's a way. And I know that you can be better than Johnny. Why is this happening? Right. And then you start breaking it down with them at what's going, going wrong with them. And you start having them open up talking about you. Then you nail that what's going on with them. And then once you nail that and you show them, this is what you're going to do. And if you're not doing it, like that's your own fault. I can't help you. Right. It's, you're going to have to be the one to change, but you need to do these steps every single day. And I'll follow up with you. We'll hop on like a 15 minute call every single day, but you have to do what I'm telling you right now, because that's how you're going to become successful. Yeah. All those things really bleed back into each other. Yeah. You know, as far as I think, a lot of people, they just, they, they deal with that same things we did when we first got in the business. Like, you know, they're not self-confident. They deal with a lot of that fear and anxiety, like Mm -hmm. going into appointments and presentations. And the only way you move past that is by doing the boring work, like actually doing it, like doing the presentation, sitting in homes, presenting to people, making the dials. And it can be like a daunting task. Like, and especially if you don't, you know, actually game plan your days. Like you said, setting your goals, looking at what you want your year to look like and breaking that down by month, by week, by day. And just knowing that small input that you have to put in every day to achieve those goals. Once you do that, it's, I mean, it it makes it a lot less daunting. It makes like the fear and anxiety go away. Um, 
it helps yeah. you get to the learning curve a lot faster for a new agent. Yep. And I think another proponent is when people struggle with money goals, right? Like I say, I have my long-term goal that I want to hit for the year. Then I start breaking up day to day. Well, I start having agents that are struggling, even making money. I'll say, Hey, I'm going to have you start setting activity goals. Like I'm going to, we're going to have activity goals since you're struggling getting these sales in. I'm going to, we're going to at least have a goal that you're going to hit. That's going to make you feel good about yourself to the point where now there may be a, you know, a, a transition of actually getting a sale or trans transferring a sale. Right. So I'll have, yeah. let's make $400 this day. Like we're going to make $400 today. You're going to do nothing besides make $400 today. And we're going to see what's going to happen. Right. Yeah. So, so even for new agents, I mean, if you're struggling in making money in the business, you need to go ahead and set yourself a daily activity goal, because if you start hitting these activity goals every single day, it's going to continue to compound and then you'll get sales from it as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of people that, that struggle with the self-confidence, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly, like yep. set those daily goals for activity. And I'll see people come in. They're like, man, I'm going to do 400 dials. And then they do 400 yeah. dials the first day. And the next day they're burnt out. They're like, then they do 50. Yeah. And you're like, Dude, what happened? You know? And they just like trash their mindset on it. I tell a lot of people, it's like, even in personal life, it's like set the small daily wins that compound into bigger and bigger and bigger mm -hmm. every single day. It's like, I would rather you come in and do a hundred dials a day for your first week then rip 400 dials the first day and then none the next. Yeah. It's like, if, if you're comfortable doing a hundred, then the next week, let's bump it to 200, like whatever that looks like. But we need to have consistent daily activity to really start seeing success and tracking back numbers to see what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, sir. That's really what it comes down to, man. So appreciate you coming on here, dude, dropping a ton of, of uh, just insight in terms of what you're doing. Uh, you're successful, man. Where can people reach out to, man, and uh, follow you for, for more? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> you can reach out to my Instagram, Alexander Sala underscore. You can re reach me on Facebook at Alexander Sala. You can reach me at alexandersala.com. And then, um, yeah, so you can reach me out to those platforms, and then I'll respond back to you um, if you have anything for me. But I'm very appreciative, Johnny, of the opportunity of being on here with you today, bro, and Austin Let's as well. Let's go. I appreciate it man yes, you dropped sir. a ton of bombs and gave a lot of value for people so. yes sir i appreciate it bro yeah man let's go um appreciate you coming on here dude um best of luck with everything you got going on coaching consulting uh agency building uh your podcasts both of them that you got going on dude um special dude and uh keep rocking and rolling we'll see you guys on the next one don't forget to subscribe right now down below share share this with a friend if you found it valuable we'll see you guys on the next podcast Peace.